The physical properties of substances depend on the intermolecular forces between those substances. For instance, whether a substance is a liquid or a gas will depend on the strength of those intermolecular interactions. If the interactions are strong, then the molecules are pulled close together and they form a liquid. If the interactions are weaker, then there's no um, strong force to pull those molecules close together and they will be spread out further away from each other, non-interacting, and they will be a gas. So the phase of matter, whether something is a gas, a liquid, or a solid, will depend on the strengths of those intermolecular forces. The strength of the intermolecular forces increase as I go from gas to liquid to solid. So each substance will have a particular phase of matter that it exists at when it's at room temperature. But if we change the temperature, we can get a gas to become a liquid. So this gas becomes a liquid, or we can take a liquid and have it become a gas. So we can evaporate, go from the liquid to the gas, or condense, go from the gas to the liquid. So there are changes of state, and those changes of state will depend on the temperature at which we have those systems. Recall that temperature is a measure of the amount of kinetic energy in that a molecule has. So the temperature relates to the average kinetic energy of the molecules in a system. So if we think about a particular substance and we think about the amount of kinetic energy or the temperature of that system, then we would expect that at low temperatures, where the system has very little energy, the molecules aren't going to have enough energy to um, break apart the intermolecular forces that hold them together, and so a substance at low temperature is most likely to be a solid. If we increase the temperature, we would expect that we might be able to get enough energy that we could break up the intermolecular forces that are holding the molecules together in the solid and make that substance a liquid. And then if we increase the temperature even more, we could break up the intermolecular forces that are holding the molecules into that liquid state and get it into a gas state. So if a substance is a solid at room temperature, I could increase the temperature and I could melt that solid. So melting is just taking the solid and making it a liquid. If I continue to increase the temperature, give the molecules more energy, they can get away from each other, they can break up the intermolecular interactions, get away from each other, and become a gas, and that is the process of evaporation. If I go in reverse and go from a gas to a liquid, we call that condensation. And if I go in reverse and go from a liquid to a solid, we call that freezing. Let's take a look at what this looks like on a molecular level for water. So here I have a bunch of water molecules at a very low temperature. You can see at the top of the simulation the thermometer is reading 146 Kelvin. So that's way, way, way below zero Celsius and the molecules are frozen into the solid state. You can see that the red oxygens and the white hydrogens, each um, molecule has one oxygen and two hydrogens, so it's a water molecule. And you can see that if you look at any one given water molecule, it is um, interacting with the molecules around it and forming hydrogen bonds with the molecules around it. Now each molecule is in constant motion, but the molecules cannot get away from their closest neighbors. They can't get away from those neighbors because the temperature is so low and they have such a small amount of energy 
that they don't have enough energy to break those hydrogen bonds and to move away from their neighbors. However, if I give the system some um, energy by heating it up, so let's go up to a temperature above zero, and you can see that now the water molecules are free to move around and to interact with different neighbors. And um, you can see that they're not as well ordered and they're not um, very, very nicely um, placed into the, the solid crystalline lattice. And so now we have a liquid. So we've gone up to 282 Kelvin, which is a little bit above zero Celsius. And so now we have water as a liquid. If we continue to heat the system and we take the temperature up, we will begin to get up to a temperature where we might expect that we would have enough energy for some of those liquid molecules to start to um, have enough energy to get away from their neighbors completely and to go into the gas phase. And so now we can see that up at the surface of the liquid, we're starting to get molecules that are moving away from the liquid and into the gas phase, so they're evaporating. And as they evaporate, if you look at the pressure gauge up at the top of the simulation, you'll see that they're starting to create a pressure in the chamber because the water molecules that are in the gas phase can start to exert a pressure on the walls of the container. And the mo molecules are moving faster and faster as they get more kinetic energy as the temperature increases. And as I get more and more into the gas phase, watch that pressure gauge, you can see that the pressure increases. So the pressure of the system is going to depend, in that closed system is gonna depend on how many molecules are in the gas phase versus how many are in the liquid phase. Now, another thing to notice is that if, um, if you look at those molecules, the oxygen and the hydrogen in each water molecule has remained intact. The water molecules are remaining intact. So the water molecules are still water molecules, meaning that they have an oxygen bonded to two hydrogens in a bent configuration. And those molecules aren't changing, for, changing as in terms of their chemical structure. They're only changing the phase of matter that they're in. So if I cool the system back down, so let's go back down to uh, close to room temperature, so about 298 Kelvin. And as I do that, you'll start to see that the water molecules begin to condense back into a liquid again. So now I'm below the boiling point of, the, of water and I'm starting to slow those water molecules down. And as I slow them down, they become liquid again. And notice that the pressure has gone way down now because I have less molecules in the gas phase. And if I cool this even further down to the uh, freezing point of water, eventually the, those liquid will form back into my crystalline solid where the molecules are not moving very, very far away from their equilibrium positions in that solid. We are going to focus on the process of evaporation and condensation. And that require, requires us to understand the difference between evaporation and boiling. So when I uh, have a liquid and it is below its boiling point, then molecules can still move from the liquid to the gas phase, so they can still evaporate, but they also have a chance of, if they're moving in the direction towards the liquid, of condensing back down. And so when I'm evaporating, I'm evaporating molecules from the surface of the liquid, right? And I can have, depending on the temperature, I can have molecules condensing as well. If this is a closed container, then I'm going to reach a point where the evaporation and the condensation, so molecules leaving the surface of the liquid, molecules coming back to the surface of the liquid, those two processes are happening at equal rates, and the total amount of molecules in the gas phase will not change. So if this is a closed container, 
I will reach the vapor pressure of the um, gas above the liquid. But notice that in evaporation, only the surface molecules are um, leaving the liquid phase and going into the gas phase. When I get to a high enough temperature, my liquid will begin to boil. And when my liquid begins to boil, what's happening is that I have enough energy that molecules in even down here in the middle of the liquid are going to start to form gas phase molecules and make little bubbles. And those little bubbles are gonna to rise to the surface and then those molecules in those bubbles, those little gas bubbles are gonna escape into the gas phase. So the big difference between evaporation and boiling is that at evaporation, only the surface molecules have enough energy to reach the gas phase. When I get up to the boiling point, then even molecules down here in the middle of the liquid have enough energy to go into the gas phase and we form little bubbles of gas in the liquid which rise to the surface and then those gas molecules escape. So molecules are escaping into the gas phase throughout the entire liquid when it's boiling, but only from the surface when it's evaporating. So notice that this suggests that the boiling point, T sub B, the boiling point of a liquid, will depend on the intermolecular forces. If the intermolecular forces are stronger, then I need more energy to allow all of the molecules down here to be able to get away from each other and form these little bubbles of gas. So I need a higher temperature for stronger intermolecular forces. So my boiling point is going to increase as the intermolecular forces get stronger. So recall that we said that the pressure inside a closed container is gonna depend on how many molecules are in the gas phase. The amount of molecules in the liquid phase don't really make a difference in terms of the pressure. It's those gas molecules colliding with the walls of the container and bumping into the walls of the container that create a pressure on the walls of the container. So it's the number of gas molecules in my system that are going to determine what we call the vapor pressure of the, of the liquid. And so if I have molecules evaporating from the surface of the liquid and I close off the container, then at some point I'm gonna get enough molecules up here in the gas phase that it's equally likely that some of the molecules will condense back into the liquid phase. And when the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation, then every time a molecule leaves the, the surface and becomes a gas molecule, one joins the surface and becomes a liquid. And so the total number of gas molecules in the um, system will not change because equal amounts go up as go down. And so I keep the same number of gas molecules up here in the vapor phase. When I get that stable number of molecules up in, the, up in the gas phase, then I have reached the vapor pressure of my liquid. If I increase the temperature, so if I increase the temperature, then more molecules are going to have the energy to go into the gas phase. So I've just made more of my molecules moving faster, so more of them go to the gas phase. And if I have more molecules in the gas phase, then my pressure is going to increase. So vapor pressure is a function of temperature. And as the temperature goes up, the vapor pressure also goes up. Notice that this is also a function of the intermolecular forces between my molecules. Because the stronger the intermolecular forces are that are holding the molecules in the liquid, the less likely they are to be able to get away from the liquid molecules and go into the gas phase, the less likely they are to evaporate. So the, the um, less that I can get up here, um, the lower the vapor pressure. So stronger intermolecular forces will lead to lower vapor pressures because I have, at a given temperature, because I have a lower probability 
that I'm going to break those strong intermolecular forces and make molecules in the gas phase. And the vapor pressure depends on how many molecules I have in the gas phase.